Okay, lesson 11 is a review to a certain degree of what you already know and a connection to uh, parables. So we're familiar with this thing called the zero product property. We're going to use it to find horizontal intercepts uh, or X intercepts. Okay, so the, um, to start out with, this is Jenna said the two products of two numbers, or Jenna said the product of two numbers is 20. Would the factors have to be four and five? And the answer is no. It could have been um, uh, two and 10 or some other ones, right? Then Julie said the product of two numbers is 20. Would both factors have to be less than 20? Um, and why? Well, no, if you did one half times 40, you'd get 20, and, and 40 is greater than 20. Justin said the product of two numbers is 20. Would both factors have to be positive? No, negative 4 times negative 5 equals positive 20. Jeremy said the product of two numbers is 0. What would you, what do you know must be true about the factors? If that's true, then one of the numbers has to be zero. It doesn't matter which one or both for that matter. And that's where we're headed today. All right. Um, demanding Dwight insists on, and we've seen Demanding Dwight before, right? It insists on that you give him two solutions for the following equation. Uh, well, we know that if x minus 10 equals 0, then x equals 10. Or if x plus 20 equals 0, then x has to equal negative 20. Then part B, demanding Dwight now wants five solutions to the following equation. And holy cow, they have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, let's, it's going to take some work here. So we've got uh, x minus 10 equals 0. So x equals 10. That's 1. I'm going to stop the uh, video so you don't have to watch me do all these. You work them on your own. Okay, so as I set each term to 0 and solve, I was able to get x equals 10, x equals negative 3, uh, x equals plus or minus 6. There's two of them there, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, for this one, you can't take the square root of a negative. So that one didn't give us any real solutions. Hint, we're going to get imaginary solutions from that someday. And lastly, 5x equals 20. Do you think there might be a sixth, sixth solution? Uh, the answer is... Uh, possibly uh, imaginary solutions. But we don't know about those yet, right? Um, all right. So based on what we know, if A times B equals 0, then either A equals 0 or B equals 0 or both A and B equals 0. This is known as a zero product property, which we are familiar with. Uh, we got to the point where we could probably solve this uh, and say that x is equal to 4 and negative 3 without much work on that one. However, that's not the equation or the question here. It says rewrite the equation as a compound statement. x minus 3, um, x plus 3 equals 0 or x minus 4 equals 0. There's your compound statement. Um, subtract 3 and we get x equals negative 3. Add 4, we get x equals 4. So yeah, we get x equals negative 3 and 4, just like we said. Going back to our licorice example, and I'll let you read, go back and read that if you need to. 
um, how can we determine the width of the sleeve if we know the height? Well, remember, the we had 10 units to work with. And if the height, uh, if we knew the height, then we could subtract 2 times the height on one from each side, right? So that essentially would be 10 minus 2 h. So the width would be 10 minus 2 h. Therefore, my volume is going to be h times 10 minus 2 h times 12. Um, this, move that out of the way, leads us to question 7. It says, which of the equations below could be used to accurately represent the volume of the sleeve? Okay, now this is actually kind of interesting. So I'm looking for uh, three factors, h, 12, and 10 minus 2h. So clearly, um, this is one, because that's identical to what we have. There's the 12 and h. That has to be another one. That's just your commutative property. Um, if I distributed the h, I get 10h minus 2h squared. That'll work, won't it? Um, if I factored out, um, if I factored out a 2 here, that leaves, actually I factor out a negative 2, right? That will leave an h minus 5 or make this a negative 24. So if that's the case, that one will work also just by factoring out a negative 2. And then lastly, um, if I distributed this 12 to both terms, I'm going to get 120h and negative 24h squared, which gives me this. So therefore, I am going to have to say, all five. Our solutions. All five are the same equation. Okay, for problem number eight, they're asking us the question, the horizontal intercepts is where the curve meets the horizontal axis. In other words, we did something like this, didn't we? And it hit here and it hit here. Um, in this case, the horizontal axis is your height. What does the horizontal intercept mean in our licorice, licorice packaging problem? Well, that means if we have a height of zero, then we have a volume of zero. If we have a height of zero here, then we also have a volume of zero. If h equals zero, then v equals zero. Number nine says use one of the circled equations to find the horizontal intercepts uh, algebraically. Well, that's interesting. That would probably be uh, something that is factored. Uh, and I would consider this one right here. So negative 24h volume equals negative 24h times h minus 5. If h is 0, then either negative 24h is 0 or h minus 5 is 0. So if negative 24h equals 0, then h is 0. Or if h minus 5 equals 0, then h is equal to 5, which we already knew. All right, that was just trying to show you that you already know quite a bit of, of this zero product property. Um, reflection, it'd probably be worthwhile reflecting on this. Which of the equation made it easiest to find the horizontal intercepts? Well, that would be the factored form. 
or V equals negative 24 H times X minus five. Um, I would think the most difficult would be the one that's all multiplied out. Um, 11a, can you easily tell uh, what the vertex is from these equations? Not, not from um, any of these forms. N none of these were factored form, or, or I'm sorry, none of these were vertex forms. So I'm just going to say no, and I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, what would the vertex tell us in this situation? It would tell us our maximum uh, value. All right, some more fun here. Isabella wrote the volume uh, of the sleeve in vertex form. We'd seen this before, right? Prove that Isabella's equation is equivalent to any of these equations you circled in 7. I'm going to pause it, show the works, so and we're not spending time looking at this. Okay, so I went ahead and verified it. Uh, I chose that equation to verify. You can go back to the previous page and check that that's correct. And then I multiplied this out, uh, and I ended up with that exact equation. So it does verify. Could you use Isabella's equation to find the horizontal intercepts? Uh, in that case, no, because it's not in factored form. Factored form is the only uh, form that we can get the intercepts from. And factored Okay, so now they're going back and saying, okay, let's go back and practice. I'm going to pause and I'll show you the answers. All right, so we have, uh, for all of these, the solutions are there. I'll let you pause it. Otherwise, I'm going to move on. Uh, this is the tricky one. We forget about this outside. That right there means uh, X is equal to zero. Don't forget that. All right, um, they want us to multiply this time, and we're looking for patterns. What patterns did you notice? So as you multiply these, look for patterns. Use either the box method or the double distributive method. I'm going to um, stop the video so we don't run out of time. All right, so hopefully you recognize a pattern in that we the middle terms are going to subtract out, and I didn't keep working those. Uh, in this case, if we if we recognize the plus and minus there, the middle term will go away, and all we have is x squared minus 25, and that's true all along here. This is called a difference of squares. We should know this. You're going to want to know this. Okay, I hope we saw the pattern. Then we'll state the rule. Because this is a difference of squares, we know the middle term is going to go away, and we're going to get a squared minus b squared, a difference of squares. And done.